Well, basically, we start with the wood that makes uh, the bee boxes. And, of course, you know the price of lumber has gone sky high. So the boxes are more expensive. The frames are more expensive. Uh, uh, the bottles that we have to get for uh, producing mead are more expensive. They come from China. They're very, very hard to get. Uh, you almost have to have at least six months uh, to get those. And they're getting more expensive again. Honey itself is getting more expensive. Uh, because uh, of the losses we've had in Alberta in the last uh, year or two, uh, it's uh, getting, totally getting expensive. And the price of, price of glass or jars and so on are the same idea. They're, you have to be way ahead of it uh, to get them and so on. Um, again, with ice cream, the cream that comes is more expensive. So the ice cream is more expensive. And it all comes down to the consumer who has to uh, pay the price. And, you know, we, we take it, everybody takes it along the line and so on, right? Adam Sos here for Rebel News with more and more people concerned with both the rising costs due to inflation as well as supply chain issues. People are looking at how they can become more independent and how they can source things locally. We've shown you with visits to Hartel Homestead and Glen Gary Bison Ranch how you can get your own meat. We also did some survivalist solution videos and even went out and did a little bit of foraging. But now we're on location here at the Chinook Honey Company to learn a little bit about beekeeping and perhaps even how to make some tasty beverages out of that honey. So as I mentioned, we're here at the Chinook Honey Company and I'm with owner Art Andrews, who's gonna do a bit of a breakdown. We're gonna go through the entire process of how they go from hive to honey that you can purchase right here in their store. How are you doing? Great. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks so much for having us here. It's a real honor. You're very welcome to come. And uh, anytime at all, we have uh, guests all the time here. So it's really good. Really good. Awesome. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, and uh, today is a beautiful day and we're going to open some hives and have a good, really good look at them and see how they're doing. This should be a pretty good year. Lots of moisture for nectar. So we should have lots of honey this year. So. So I really I gotta ask quickly because people at home are gonna wonder. You kind of know what you're doing, so you're good without this. Myself, Mocha's here. We've got the full protective equipment on. Have you developed a bit of an immunity to the stings, or what's the story there? Uh, no, uh, I just uh, uh, get stung once in a while. It doesn't bother me too much. Uh, I'm not allergic to it. And uh, after uh, 26 years of doing it, I still dress up sure. I don't I like to cover my head. Uh, but uh, if I get stung here and there, it's not a big deal. It's uh, actually uh, very good for arthritis. Yeah. And we do sell uh, bee venom uh, stuff in the store for arthritis too. So, And uh, you can see the, the bees are coming and going here now, doing their job. Yeah. So in opening the hive, we always work from the back of the hive so we don't mess up the front when they're coming and going. And you'll see on the top here, we have a, this is a feeder. This is used uh, during the winter time when we put sugar syrup in here to keep them uh, 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 within food all winter and uh, so on. So what we're doing now is we're just checking and see how they're doing because we need to put boxes on this time of year so they can fill it with honey and they're called supers. So this hive here is not quite ready for a new box yet uh, because um, uh, we need at least uh, five or six frames full of bees before we put the third box on. You'll see this one here has got two boxes on, yeah. a very strong hive and so on. And so are, are these just standard bees? Are there types? What's uh, the... These are all honey bees. These here are basically are, are, uh, Italians. Uh, so there's different, uh, there's carnioleans, there's Italians. Uh, there's different kinds of uh, uh, strains basically, but they're all honey bees and mm -hmm. they all uh, do, the same, uh, do the same job. And so how do you actually, what's the process for actually extracting honey from here? Okay, so what, we, what we're going to do, if we're going to take the honey away from the bees, uh, we'll take this box off and it, you know, we'll, we have a blower. It's, uh, it's hard to do this time of year because we're not doing it, but you'll see that uh, this is a frame. Uh, we'll take a frame out here and I'll show you. And we'll give it a little bit of smoke first. Just uh, give them something to think about. <laughs> you see that's a full frame that's a frame yeah and you can see they're starting to put honey in it you can see right here you yeah. see the liquid honey okay and uh that they'll fill that right full of honey and then when it's all full and the moisture content of the honey is below 18 percent they're going to cover it with wax and seal it and it'll be good forever so in order to take that honey off, 
we have to take a hot knife and scrape the wax off. And then this goes into an extractor and it spins and throws the honey out. We collect the honey and it comes out to a spout at the bottom. So at that point, do you bring like empty slates back and put them in and the bees continue working? Yep, we can do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm sure we'll talk about this a little bit later, probably when we get into the store. But as far as the sort of different flavors, types of honey, is that just based on the local flowers? How, how is that determined? Yes, it is. Every flower gives a different type of nectar and the nectar is what determines the honey. And if it comes from a buckwheat uh, flower, for instance, buckwheat uh, gives you a very, very dark black honey, very strong, where alfalfa is very light, like you see here, is very light honey. And in Alberta, it produces about 40% of the honey in Canada. Uh, we have basically mostly alfalfa, uh, some wildflowers, some canola, and, and the honey right from one end of the province to the other. Uh, where if you wanted something more of a varietal, you would have to plant the field like sweet clover or, um, and, uh, and of course in the springtime they get dandelion honey, which is quite different too. So uh, how much honey do you guys kind of go through here? This is the sort of sorting and separating facility in a year, how much do you produce? Uh, we're gonna produce, uh, we don't, we run about a hundred hives. So we're gonna run about 10, uh, 45 gallon drums of honey. Okay. And uh, that's about uh, 6,000 6, uh, pounds, 7,000 pounds of honey. We're not big. There's people in Alberta that run uh, 10,000 hives, 14,000, or basically a minimum of 4,000 hives. We uh, produce uh, enough honey basically for the store, but we also supplement. And for different kinds of varietals like we can't get in Alberta, like uh, buckwheat honey comes from Manitoba. And we have things from all over the world. We have uh, honey from Brazil and Australia and, uh, and so on. Uh, and so on. So, and uh, you can see over here these 45 gallon drums, they're all full of honey. Oh, wow. And uh, they weigh 630 pounds of honey, 655 total uh, oh, wow. weight. And we have to take them because pure honey will crystallize. We have to warm it up to get it back to liquid. Mm -hmm. So we warm it up and we put it in tanks and we tap it into smaller jars mm -hmm. and so on. And uh, of course, you can see our bee boxes here. These are all uh, uh, boxes. And if you look back here, you'll see. The supers are smaller, a little smaller than some of the big ones here. Mm -hmm. and those are going to go on the hives uh, by probably the, the middle of August. Those boxes will all be out there on the hives. Okay. Yeah. The extracting facility is over here. So if you look at the frame of honey, uh, this is an older frame and you can see it's been crystallized here. So that has to be uh, taken out so the bees can fill it again. Anyway, just think that's full of uh, pure honey and we want to get that honey out of there. We have to cut the top off as usual. And when the bees build comb, they build at a 12 and a half degree angle from the top down. And if you look at that, you can see how the angle is. Mm -hmm. And that's because the honey, you want to keep the honey from falling out, right? right. So that goes in, uh, that has to go to the outside. So it throws the honey out. It goes in here. This here spins and it throws the honey at the, at the frame, it comes down, and we have a stainless steel sump that goes in this, this uh, sump hole here, mm -hmm. and the honey rolls into it. And when it's full, we hook up a pump, the pump pumps it into this tank, and this tank here is, uh, we have a little heat on the bottom, mm -hmm. so we heat the honey a little bit, and all the debris will come to the top, yeah. and we just pump it off the bottom into 45 gallon drums. Well. Yeah, and these the hold 72 frames, and that would hold 72 frames. So while this here is spinning, we'll be filling or emptying that one there. And how long does it spin for? How long is that process? Uh, about 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, yeah. And if the honey is uh, nice and uh, liquid, and was, the heat has got to be about 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in here. So everything is moved, say. Right, right. <clears throat> and then so from there, is that basically the ready to go product? Yep. And then it's just a matter of- We don't do anything else to it. Okay. Some people filter it if they want, uh, uh, number one, Canada number one honey, but we are Canada number one raw honey, which mm. means that we uh, we do not filter or pasteurize. Oh. It's pure honey. Yeah. I'm sure lots of people will appreciate that. Now, I suppose another question, this is as good a spot to ask for any, um, lot of, lots of people out there sort of concerned, whether it be supply chains, rising costs, all that sort of stuff. Uh, people are starting to do some of this sort of bee husbandry at home. How viable is that? Is that something you guys teach? Uh, uh, we, we, don't, we don't teach it here uh, straight, but we do have tours. On Saturdays, Sundays, we have tours. And uh, 
uh, two, two tours a day, and that teaches you all of what happens to the bees and how it works. If you want to take a course, the Calgary Beekeepers in Calgary, if you look those people up, they have courses and they can teach you how to uh, be a beekeeper, also getting the equipment and also getting the bees. You start your own backyard hive. And yes, you can produce enough honey in your backyard to keep your family going with uh, one or two hives. No problem. Yeah, that's a good deal for sure. Because the way things are going, of course, everything's getting more expensive. Uh, honey's going to get any more expensive. It's going to be more expensive to buy. So if you get into your own bees, it's a great thing. And not only that, uh, you're producing uh, uh, pollination. You're producing more bees for the environment. So it's all good. So we've obviously seen everyone knows honey incredible. Um, we can even gather mead from this now or distill it. Um, but just how significant, I know there's a lot of talk about there about dwindling bee populations, how significant bees are, how we should be significantly concerned as bee populations dwindle. dwindle. How significant are they to like the food we consume, for example? Oh, well, 33% of your food is basically pollinated by honeybees alone. There are other pollinators, there are small uh, leaf cutter bees, different kinds of bees that you'll see in the garden and so on. And bumblebees do pollinate a little bit, uh, but honeybees are the most prolific uh, of any uh, any pollinator. Uh, so 33% of your food basically comes directly from honeybees. And as soon as you lose uh, your flowers, uh, your basically your hay and so on, your animals start to suffer too. Mm -hmm. So it all snowballs. It's not a good not a good deal. So they're very uh, very important to our our environment to our, to us. And the products from honey are so amazing because you can use it for food of course you can use it for uh, uh, burns and cuts and wounds it's, it mm -hmm. heals really well and you can also make honey wine and mead which is the oldest alcoholic drink known to man it's uh it started in uh, china and it's a drink of the marriage for the babylonians and so on and it's fermented uh, uh honey basically it's a honey water yeast that's all it is yeah. uh it's not easy to make but it's it's a uh, almost half of our business here now. And we started this in 2008 and it's done uh, very well for us. Well, let's go over and take a look at that sort of process for the mead making. Sounds good. Awesome. So as we mentioned, you can also uh, get that uh, beautiful mead out of the honey as well. I guess first off, for people who maybe haven't had mead, what's it sort of akin to? What's the flavor like? Well, basically uh, mead is honey wine and instead of using grapes, you're using honey. So it's honey water yeast. We can add fruit to that. Uh, we can add spices and herbs and so on to give it different flavors. We have 13 different kinds that you can taste here and so on. And um, we sell most of our meat is sold here. But for anybody that's never had it, it's going to be a little sweeter than normal uh, grape wine. Although some uh, grape wines like ice wine is pretty sweet too. Uh, the reason we do it here uh, more traditionally like Europeans, uh, because we need to taste the honey. If you make a mead that you don't have the taste of the honey. You really uh, are, are losing something. Although some people like it dry uh, with little taste of honey and so on. We make a couple that's drier than normal. But for the most part, it's uh, medium sweet. You're going to taste honey and so on. Okay. Yeah. So what's the process from honey to mead? Okay, the process is uh, you're going to mix uh, water and honey together. And then you're going to add yeast. Uh, we add yeast nutrients to keep the yeast happy. And we aerate our culture for uh, about six hours before. And we put that in the tank, and in uh, two weeks, we have about 8 to 9% alcohol. It's then transferred to another tank, and then from that uh, tank, it starts to settle. Uh, we get it clear, and we stop the fermentation around 12 to 13%. And then, of course, we had a filter. We do, do two types of filtering, one coarse, one fine, and then uh, we bottle it. And then from there on, it's, uh, it gets better with age. So if you want to wait 15 years, you'll have an even better mead then, and so on. Uh, so we are here now in the Chinook Honey Company uh, store. Everyone is sort of welcome to come down here, check out some stuff. What are some of the things that you've got here in the shop? Uh, first of all, we have mead, we have all honey, we have all kinds of different kinds of honey. We have uh, all kinds of different jams and and, uh, and jellies and uh, what was made in our uh, kitchen. Uh, we have honey ice cream. Uh, I think there's seven or eight different varieties of that. Uh, we have all the candles, uh, the beeswax candles and the beeswax. And uh, basically, uh, 
anything you can think of that it relates to bees, we pretty well have it. So if you could just maybe comment, obviously there's a lot of sort of supply chain issues. Very often the costs are being passed on to farmers, ranchers, mm -hmm. uh, beekeepers like yourself. Um, wh what's it like in this sort of current atmosphere financially? Well, basically we start with the wood that makes uh, the bee boxes. And of course, you know, the price of lumber has gone sky high. Mm -hmm. So the boxes are more expensive. The frames are more expensive. Um, uh, the bottles that we have to get for uh, producing mead are more expensive. They come from China. They're very, very hard to get. Uh, you almost have to have at least six months uh, to get those, and they're getting more expensive again. Honey itself is getting more expensive uh, because uh, of the losses we've had in Alberta in the last uh, year or two. Uh, it's uh, getting, totally getting expensive. And the price of, price of glass or jars and so on are the same idea. There, you have to be way ahead of it uh, to get them and so on. Um, again, with ice cream, the cream that comes is more expensive. So the ice cream is more expensive. And it all comes down to the consumer who has to uh, pay the price. And, you know, we, we take it, everybody takes it along the line and so on. Right? Well, I do want to thank you so much for having us down today. It was a real treat to kind of get through the whole process there with you. Art Andrews here from Chinook Honey Company. Come check this place out. It's great. As always, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. For Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. So I absolutely love having the opportunity to chat with you, to chat with our ever-growing audience. But I'd actually love for you to have that opportunity as well. We actually have advertising opportunities available with rebelnews.com. We don't get handouts from the government. We trust on supporters, viewers, and advertisers like you. So instead of folks listening to me in this spot, they could actually be checking out your company, getting information about your business. For more information or to advertise with us, send an email to ads at rebelnews.com.